President Muhammad Buhari breaks his silence on the APC's leadership crisis and insists the convention must hold on March 26th. And the administration led by President Buhari is being knocked by uh, for prosecuting Namdi Kanu while ignoring bandits kinking Melu Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Pope. As the APC crisis deepens, President Muhammad Buhari has broken his silence over the crisis rocking the All Progressive Congress. Now, in a statement by his senior special assistant on media, Garba Shehu, the president warned the leaders and members of the APC to desist from name calling and backstabbing. He reiterated that the party's national convention would hold on March the 26th. The president also asked members of the party to learn from the failure of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, as regards disunity, mismanagement and corruption. He said the PDP had failed in 16 years in power and a failure as an opposition. The president also blamed the role of the media in the crisis rocking the party, saying that focusing on the internal divisions of the party was a waste of everyone's time. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ifedayo Iyaniwura. He is the Akiti State IPAC chairman, and we're also being joined by Opunabo Inko Tare. He's a former special advisor on media and publicity to Governor Wiki. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. It's nice to good evening, Marian, and good evening, Nigerians. Great. I I'm going to start with you, Opunabo. Interestingly, the, the president has um, said... I mean, f finally, the president has broken his silence. Importantly, uh, a lot of people had wondered why, including me, why the president had been tight-lipped as to the runnings of the party, being that normally, um, it might not be by the books, but the president is obviously the leader of the party, even though the APC does have a national leader of the party. Uh, but now the president has broken his silence and he's talking about the issue of backstabbing and name-calling. And these are some of the things that have characterized the crisis within the APC. But what do you think sits at the core of the crisis rocking the APC? Well, let me start by saying uh, the president's uh, statement could be likened to uh, a spring of hope, considering the supposed listlessness of the president when it comes to intraparty matters. He has always been silent and has allowed other gladiators to dictate the pace. Having said that, it's a joyous daybreak to hear Mr. President speak and also assure Nigerians that the APC convention will take place on the 26th of March. That date is almost sacrosanct now, going by the release by the Special Administration to the President of Media and Public. I haven't said this anyway. Um, I must say that the party crisis is occasioned by ambition of certain persons, the ambitions of certain persons who believe that the ambition should uh, precede or supersede the interest of the party. Don't forget that the APC is um, a combination of various, a collection of various political parties that came together principally to oust the PDP. And so they all came with different ideologies, they all had different programs, they all had different interests and what have you. And that is it. Now there is that clash. What unified them was Mr. President. Now there is that clash of interest because the president is living, he's not going to contest again for the third time. And so who will succeed him is the problem. These are best, strange bedfellows that came together to ask. But, but, but this is. But of this, having somebody. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm ahead. sorry. Uh, but this is the case for political parties in Nigeria. They're always are coming together of strange bedfellows. They're always different interests half the time. They're all there just because of the power that they can grab. So I don't think it's anything new per se. But. Uh, Mr. President being gradually getting out of the picture, as you have said, might be the problem. So what then does this pretend for the f future of the party? 
because the president has made mention of what I hear. What I hear. Yes. What I hear is what I refer to as a, a non dimity song. In other words, the song of death is macabre dance at the theater of ambition, the crazy spin of lunacy. The members of the APC are maximizing the minimum and minimizing the maximum. What is the maximum? The ultimate aim should be continuation, how to win the 2023 general elections. That should be the primary concern of APC members. But that is not their primary concern. Right now, the primary concern of APC members, uh, uh, especially those that are interested in political office, is how to emerge as candidates. And that is the problem they have. Forgetting that for you to emerge as candidates, you, you, have, you must need a platform. And not just a platform, a formidable platform. A platform that will continue to trounce the major opposition party, which is the PDP, and probably the third force. But that aspect of the struggle is being sidelined. What they have put in front of the front burner is who will emerge as the candidate of the party. Either the candidate of the, the as emerge as the first chairman of the party, and eventually, because that's a very large thing, will determine who will emerge as the presidential candidate. And that is the bane of the party. That is the internal wrangling. And that is what has been responsible for the unnecessary postponement of their convention. And that is what is also affecting uh, um, uh, the, the leadership the, uh, uh, problem in the crisis, the leadership crisis. That is what is responsible for okay. the leadership crisis in the party. The issue of Bumi and the issue of um, this new man now. Bello. now that is acting, I forgot it. Bello. The, the, the governor. Bello, yes. That is what it does because they all have factions. Some have lost confidence in Bumi. Bumi, they see, they believe that he has sinister moves, sinister plots. Okay. So they've lost confidence. So the party is divided between Bumi and Bello. So that is the problem they are having. And uh, unlike other political parties, like the PDP, the PDP had leadership crisis. But they were able to nip it in the bud early enough. Now, you consider the legal restrictions. When will APC do this? If it misses the March 26 general election, there will be a mess in another round of legal battles. So that's why the president is saying it must be sacrosanct. Okay. Because you have time frame. Okay. Let me come to you. Um Mr. Yaniwura, uh, it's interesting. The president, I want to quote the president directly. He insisted and urged the party members to remain steadfast and maintain unity if the party is to continue on the path of victory and its dominance at all levels throughout the country. <coughs> now, the president is talking about unity here, but we also know that the president has handpicked somebody who he thinks would be best to run the party. Um, something that because again, I started by saying that the president has always been aloof when it comes to internal party politics. How can peace come about within the APC with all of these wranglings and major, major kingpins within the party who have their own interests as opposed to what Mr. President wants? Now, well, thank you very much for having me. Well, let me start by saying with every sense of humility that uh, in, the, in Mr. President's speech, he hasn't spoken because uh, uh, a political party has never been a part of the agency under the federal government. That uh, Mr. President will just remove the chairman and appoint a chairman at will. The, the ball is in the party's court if the party is willing to conduct a uh, uh, party convention this very much. First, let's see what the law says in section 82, subsection 1 of Electoral Act 2022. The law requires at least 21 days' notice of any convention, Congress, conference or meeting convey for the purpose of merger or electing members of its executive committees, other governing bodies or nominating candidates for any elected offices. Meanwhile, in, in respect of the APC proposed March 26 National Convention, there was already a notification letter in that regard, reading to, reading to INEC 
by Buni led caretaker committee of the party, okay. which of course meets the 21 days notice as required by the law. So if they are working with that direction, then the party can still, with position of the law, go ahead with the national convention in this month of March. But however, of recent we heard about the plans of some leaders and the said party to replace the government of the other state, Guni, with that of the Niger State counterpart, Abuba Kassoni Belu, as the party's caretaker chairman. This is according to asseverations of Governor Rufai on China's television. Remember I said the ball is in their court. Mm -hmm. Any attempt to go by this direction, no matter how smart the party leadership is, we hold the chance of APC to conduct this party national congress as planned in this month of March. When you say, when you say any attempt, perfect. I'm sorry, Mr. Yanua, when you say any attempt, as if it's not been done, it seems to have already been done, even though um, Governor um, Buni is also coming out to say, well, uh, it's not going to happen uh, while he's under his watch, because he said that he still remains the chairman of the party. The same goes for the secretary of the party, um, um, Akpanu Doidege, all of them still claiming to be in charge of the party, but we have seen that Belo has taken over. So you're sounding as if it's not happened, but it has actually happened, hasn't it? Well, like, like I'm just saying, anybody can claim leadership capacity. Huh. But what matters is our, our precious democracy, our dear electoral process must not, must not be bastardized. If, if, if a piece of leadership wants to work well, then they must get themselves enlightened and stop being benighted. Because if you are to go back to the position of the high neck regulation and guidelines of political party or patients, any communication between INEC and a registered political party through letter must be signed by the chairman and secretary of the party known to INEC. It will be foolhardy of anyone to think that INEC can be working with an information coming out from the news. It is so therefore expected of INEC not to recognize Abba Kabelu as APC Kateka Chama. Because it's emergence is true news on the national dailies and on national television. We have a laid down statutory procedure to change or have political party leadership in Nigeria. So in all of all this, Buni and his secretary, they remain with renowned chairman and secretary caretaker committee of APC. To high neck. Okay. So if there is any if there is any position that the party will want to take by changing the leadership of this political party, then automatically there has to be convey of uh, emergence of next meeting. Imagine of next meeting. But the, the, but the problem now is... But the APC does not necessarily have a national ex uh, executive council. They do have the CCECPC. I mean, that's, uh, that's what they have now, and that's what the Governor Buni used to head. So how are, they going to con how are they going to convene this meeting? Again, I want to push this question. As IPAC chairman, or IPAC, let's talk about it from the perspective of IPAC, where does IPAC come in here? Because this is an inter-party related issue. Uh, are you going to be consulting? Are you going to be advising on the way to go within the APC? And I'm sure that this goes for any other political party. Well, what is happening in APC is inter-party. It's certainly an inter-party affair. What we can offer is just advice. And we cannot enforce position on party leadership. But the major thing is that our personal democracy, our electoral process must properly be guided because that binds all of us together. <laughs> so this is why we are keen in offering them a better advice on which to go about this matter. The party cannot continue to grandstand 
on truth is the chairman of the party. What matter? What can? What matter is who is more recognized as the caretaker chairman of this party by high neck? Okay. If they said the party should convene neck meeting, who will sign the letter to high neck in respect of that? That's the question. Because one, some of the leaders of these parties are saying Buni is no longer their chairman, that Belo is their chairman. Belo wrote a letter to INEX, INEX renounced it. This is expected. Because a renowned chairman and secretary of a party has the statutory right to communicate to INEX. And INEX cannot have two chairmen at the same time. Mm. So if a party must change leadership, it has to follow a legal procedure. It's either they go for court induction or they call NEC or they call for national convention. Now, who will call for national convention if they are not ready to work with Buni? So the party should go and manage Buni very well. Hmm. That's the point. Let the party manage Buni very well. He has already written the letter to Heineck, which has meet the, 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 uh, the, the legal requirement, 21 days notice. Okay. And if they insist that Belo, Belo should take over, then the party should forget national convention this month. <laughs> wow. Interesting. I'm going to come back to you because this seems to be, uh, it, it gets deeper and deeper. But uh, back to you, Opuna. But the president found a way to, one way or the other, blame the media uh, for some of the problems that are, you know, happening within the APC, if not all of them. I'd like to quote him. He said it's important um, uh, to ask what benefits the poor uh, are, are getting during the period of intense negative coverage. He's talking about the media. He said that... Um, he blamed the role of the media in the crisis rocking the party and had said that it's equally clear that over the last week or so, the internal management of affairs of the APC have been uh, afforded generous media coverage over and above its importance to voters in Nigeria. And he went ahead to say, it is important to ask what benefits the poor are getting during the period of this intense negative coverage. Um, so I'm going to ask you what you think the president meant by this. Is he saying that the media is intensifying the problems within the APC? Um, or is he saying that the media is probably covering the wrong things and we should probably be interested in other, um, other matters other than the, what's happening within the APC, which is, by the way, the ruling party? Okay, but yeah, the fact does that, let me quickly uh, state that uh, with or without Bumi, the convention can go on. All I need is a letter from Bumi to say uh, Bello is holding fast for him. Bumi does not need to be there personally to conduct it. All he needs to do is transmit a letter. Because but, but, in the but eyes is, of is Gumi willing to say eyes but, of INEC, but is, is, is Gumi no, willing to say to that Bello is holding force for him, bearing in mind the way in which Bello was Bello thrown up by the party? Bello said he's acting. That was what Bello said. He's acting. Was, now, Bunny, was Bunny consulted before and, this happened? And just a second. Just a second. Bello said he's acting. Then the INEC um, commissioner for is it information or education uh what i forgot uh, first the Koye yes said what is cited the memo he cited on that it was in the social media none of course when they talk of memo it's an interactive thing that no formal letter was forwarded so and now mr president has come up to say that bello sorry Bumi, he remains the chairman of the party so it is actually sick if that was not just a subterfuge and is actually sick, all he needs to do is transmit a letter to INEC to that effect. That's all he needs to do. Because he remains the chairman in the eyes of INEC and the eyes of the law. The party, the letter must be signed by the chairman and the second. Otherwise, it will trigger a plethora of legal uh, uh, cases, legal, legal actions that might further mark the chances of the convention taking place on the 26th. And if it doesn't, then APC will not likely be on the ballot in the 2022 general election. That's the implication. Now, I haven't said that. 
uh, talking of the media, you know, it could be likened to a woman, a barren woman, somebody that is not a. That she's responsible for it. How can you blame the media? The media will only mirror the society. The media is not the one stoking the ember. The media is not the one uh, uh, responsible for the crisis in the party. It only reports what happens in the party. So how can you blame the media? It makes no sense whatsoever. But like in every other situation, the media is always blamed, especially when this uh, uh, situation is so dirty or uh, when the person is faced with very ugly uh, situations. Then the next thing, once the media carries it, the next thing they start blaming the media for being responsible because they don't want the world to be aware of what is going on in the party. But that is the role of the media. It is even a constitutional role. So why will you blame the media? The media has no blame whatsoever. Whatsoever. Nobody can blame the media for that. What the media will do is just to report what has happened. It's as simple as that. So why are you going to blame the media? Are these crises not in existence? They are. Did these things happen? Yes. Are yeah, these things manufactured by the media? No. What is what is what was, was the role of the media? Just to report, reflect what happened. So why are you blaming the media? Are you saying the media should be silent on issues? Then that will be shaking the responsibility, abdicating the responsibility. Hmm. You it's cannot blame the media for this. The party is responsible for its crisis. The Mr. President was a roof for too long. I don't know what happened. In fact, the sudden awakening is even surprising to a lot of us. Well, a lot of us don't feel the man is just listless. He's, 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 he's lethargic because he's not interested anymore. He's going. Even in terms of governance, if you can see, that, that video is no longer there. I mean, the president is not, the president is not here. Uh, the president is not here to defend in himself, in so I'm going to try to play the devil's advocate oh, here. Minute, the president has never, ever really gotten involved in party Miriam, politics. Miriam, so Miriam, should you be, Miriam, should you say that he's Miriam, been aloof? You, you did must come. Miriam. That has nothing to do with this. I'm just saying. That's why everybody, that's why everybody has the right to interpret situations. Now, that's the truth. That's, you, you have the right to interpret your situation. That's just the truth about it. So the point I'm making is simple. Even in 2019, when Mr. President was campaigning, what did he say? When he, on all the states he went, he said, you God not should vote for anybody you like, but for president, vote for me. He said that. What does that tell you? He's not really interested in the inter-party matter. He has been silent all this while. And I believe that he's only reacting based on pressure. I don't think, in, within me, I don't think Mr. President is even brother who is going to succeed him. I don't think so. He has said it that he wants to go. He's tired. He has said it before on air. You are not going to controvert that. He has said it. He cannot wait to, to exit. So I don't think he's even interested in who is going to succeed him. That is none of his business right now. Okay. All right. Interesting. And he was forced. I strongly believe he was compelled to stick because he's the leader of the party. So he was compelled to just talk. My friend, you have to talk, sir. If you don't talk, then we are in crisis. You okay. just have to make a statement. And I look at. Uh, Arifai, I don't think Arifai would have gone on air to mention Mr. President without verification. Arifai, we know, a very stubborn man. But I don't think Mr. Arifai would have done that. But this is a summer assault because of the consequences that might befall the party if they go ahead with the bellow arrangement. Okay. And I don't see Mr. Arifai going on air to say what he said because he was quite categorical. And he said he just, they just left Mr. President. He did not tell you just in a matter of conjecture. He said he was there with other governors. Okay, all right, interesting. I don't think the man would have been would, would, would be lying. I don't think so. This is a second thought to serve the party. Okay, let me come to you, Mr. Yanuwura, before we wrap things up. The president has said that members of the APC should learn from the failures of the People's Democratic Party. Uh, he talked about issues of corruption, failure, as um, you know being an opposition, playing the opposition, and several other things. In closing, um, the PDP has done 16 years um, uh, in, in power, and the APC has, uh, you know, is still grinding to that point. But um, when the president says the APC should learn from the PDP, uh, what exactly is the a APC going to be learning from uh, the mistakes of the PDP? And, and, and if, the, if the APC and the PDP were to be compared to each other, 
what would be the difference or what would be the similarities or what would be those things that the president would want the APC to learn from the, the PDP? Uh, well, because of time, let me quickly address the point. On this issue of Oni uh, and Bilo, uh, this issue of APC leadership, I want to, I want to correct a notion. Uh, there is no way somebody who is put more as a party chairman will preside over a national convention of a party. That party will be sitting on the gold powder. One, Bunin is the known chairman of the party to finance. This issue of trans transmission of power from Bunin to Belu, I think it's unfounded in democracy. Why is that stated in the APC Constitution? Why is that stated in the Electoral Act? This is political party affairs. It is not government affairs. In a well structured political party, when we have the chairman, deputy chairman, secretary, all other positions fixed as being laid inside the party constitution, can the chairman just wake up in a day and say they want to transmit a power to the youth leader of the party or to just as of the of the party? When we have the deputy chairman and secretary, that is very possible. We, we, so we, we should not encourage this thing. It's just a way of understanding our, our policy. Well, 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 we we have to go. Unfortunately, we're having um, connection issues with your audio, so we'll have to ha rank, round up here. Uh, but but I mean I, I'm I'm not sure if this APC problem is going to go anytime soon. But let's uh, keep our fingers crossed and see what happens before convention date. I want to say thank you to Fedayo Iyaniwura. He's the Kitty State. A IPAC chairman and Opunabo Inko Tara is a former special advisor on media and publicity to Governor Yesen Wiki. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. Thank, thank you. you very much. All right. Nice to all right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, the conversation continues as we discuss the accusations uh, that the president and his government um, is filled with double standards, especially when it comes to prosecution. We'll be right back.